September 23, 1943. North Atlantic, 80200 hours. The sea was calm, the moon hidden behind clouds. Perfect conditions for a U-boat attack. Captain Lieutenant Heinz Fischer peered through his periscope, confident the convoy ahead was blind. For years, German submarines had prowled the Atlantic at night with impunity, surfacing under cover of darkness to strike and vanish. Tonight, he expected another easy victory. But then, without warning, searchlights slashed the night. Allied destroyers turned directly toward his position, guns already blazing. Seconds later, depth charges thundered around his boat. Fisher screamed in disbelief. They see us! He dove desperately, but the truth had already set in. The Allies had a weapon invisible to the eye, but lethal to submarines. Radar. For U-boat captains, radar was the nightmare they could not comprehend. Their entire strategy depended on stealth. Surface at night. Attack. Then disappear. Yet by 1942-43, Allied escorts were finding them in total darkness sometimes in heavy fog, sometimes miles beyond visual range. To the Germans, it seemed supernatural. In reality, it was technology. Britain's development of centimetric radar, operating at much shorter wavelengths than earlier sets, changed the war beneath the waves. Unlike older metric radar, easily detected by German receivers, Centimetric radar was invisible to U-boat detectors until too late. Mounted on planes like the Liberator and Sunderland, or on destroyers and corvettes, it allowed allies to spot a periscope or conning tower at night from miles away. The industrial math behind this was staggering. By 1943, Allied factories were producing radar sets by the tens of thousands. British scientists at the Telecommunications Research Establishment had developed the Cavity Magnetron, a device that shrank radar into compact, powerful units. When they shared it with the Americans in 1940, mass production followed. In Massachusetts, the MIT Radiation Laboratory produced over 150 different radar designs during the war. Factories in the U.S., churned out more than 100,000 magnetrons, more than enough to equip every plane, ship, and coastal station. German intelligence knew of radar, but they vastly underestimated its scale. Admiral Donitz's staff believed radar was rare, perhaps deployed only on capital ships. In truth, Allied corvettes and even merchant ships were carrying sets. One lesser-known fact, the Allies hid radar's effectiveness with deliberate deception. When a U-boat was destroyed, official reports often credited improved lookout or lucky spotting rather than radar. This kept the Germans guessing. Captured diaries reveal U-boat commanders speculated wildly. Some believed the Allies had trained cats aboard ships to detect submarines. Others thought spies in Ireland guided aircraft. The truth was simpler. Technology had made the ocean transparent. The impact was brutal. In 1940-41, at the height of the happy time, U-boats sank Allied shipping faster than it could be built. By early 1943, that had reversed. Convoys were arriving intact. U-boats were sinking in record numbers. In May 1943 alone, the Kriegsmarine lost 41 submarines a catastrophic 25% of its operational fleet. Many never fired a torpedo. They were spotted on the surface at night by radar-equipped planes, attacked before they even knew they had been found. German sailors called it the Black May, the month the ocean turned against them. Fischer and his fellow captains faced a new, merciless pattern. They would surface to recharge batteries, certain they were hidden in darkness only to see aircraft materialize out of nowhere. The Liberator patrol bombers carried Lee lights, giant searchlights slaved to radar. At the critical moment, the lights snapped on, blinding the crew as bombs and depth charges fell. One German survivor said, 
It was as if the sun rose just for us, and then the sea exploded. The psychological shock was immense. Submariners had once been hunters, feared as wolves. Now they were prey, stalked relentlessly by unseen eyes. The statistics confirm it. By 1944, Allied planes and ships equipped with centimetric radar accounted for the majority of U-boat kills. The once proud U-boat arm, which had nearly starved Britain into surrender, was reduced to slaughter. Sailors whispered about death beams, convinced the Allies had invented a weapon beyond science. Less known is how far radar's reach extended. In 1944, Allied scientists perfected sonoboys, small floating sensors dropped by aircraft that transmitted underwater sounds back to the plane. Combined with radar, they created a deadly net. A U-boat could no longer hide beneath the waves, its presence betrayed by propeller noise, its position marked by radar when surfacing. Admiral Dönitz called it a technological war we cannot win. But radar was not only about detection, it transformed convoy battles. Before radar, escorts relied on lookouts straining eyes in storms. With radar, a single corvette could track dozens of contacts simultaneously in total darkness. Convoy commanders suddenly had eyes miles beyond the horizon. One British officer described it as lifting the fog of war, literally. A merchant sailor recalled watching his escort veer sharply at night, seconds later blasting a surfaced U-boat they had never seen with naked eyes. Industrial power amplified this. American factories could equip every new Liberty ship with radar, turning freighters into scouts. By 1944, even tankers steaming alone carried sets that outclassed Germany's best. U-boat captains complained bitterly that their detection gear, the Metox radar warning receiver, was useless. Designed to pick up old metric radar, it gave no alarm against centimetric waves. Many boats sailed blind not realizing they were already targeted. Another overlooked detail. German attempts to counter Allied radar backfired. In late 1942, crews were ordered to keep their METOX receivers running constantly. British scientists, aware of this, fitted radar sets to emit faint signals mimicking background noise. U-boats, lulled into false security, surfaced more often and were promptly destroyed. Only later did German engineers realize the deception. The mathematics of production doomed them further. The United States produced 96,000 aircraft in 1944 alone. Thousands were fitted with radar for anti-submarine patrols. The British Coastal Command, once starved of planes, now flew long-range missions with radar-equipped liberators, covering gaps in the mid-Atlantic that had once been U-boat sanctuaries. German captains who had operated in the air gap now found no refuge. By 1945, the U-boat force was collapsing. Out of 40,000 men who served, 30,000 would die, a 75% casualty rate, the highest of any branch in the war. Many perished without ever seeing their attackers. Survivors described depth charge barrages guided with eerie precision. They always knew where we were, one said. It was as if the ocean betrayed us. In truth, it was radar, backed by factories, scientists, and logistics, that betrayed them. There were bitter ironies. German scientists had themselves experimented with radar before the war, but Nazi leadership blinded by overconfidence, dismissed its potential. Goering once mocked radar as a toy for scientists. When British radar stopped the Luftwaffe during the Battle of Britain, Germany realized too late what they had ignored. And at sea, the price was paid in steel coffins littering the Atlantic floor. One more fact rarely remembered. In 1943, a U-boat captured near the Azores carried crates of Portuguese oranges in its galley. 
American intelligence officers examining the wreck noted the irony. Germany's submariners, starving their nation's civilians, were eating imported fruit, even as Allied radar-equipped planes patrolled overhead. The image of luxury against futility became a symbol of the U-boat war's decline. For men like Fischer, the realization was crushing. The U-boat had once been Germany's most feared weapon. Now it was a death trap. Every patrol carried the same dread, that in darkness, in fog, in silence, unseen machines would find them. That night, in 1943, as depth charges battered his hull, Fisher surfaced crippled, ordered his crew to scuttle, and surrendered. Pulled aboard a British corvette, he muttered, This is not war. This is science. He was wrong. It was both. Radar had turned science into war, and war into mathematics. The Battle of the Atlantic was no longer a duel of ships and submarines. It was a contest of factories, laboratories, and technologies. Germany had entered it with courage and doctrine. The Allies ended it with radar. By the time of surrender in May 1945, German U-boat captains no longer laughed at convoys. They knew the ocean itself had eyes. What they had once considered their greatest ally, night and darkness, had betrayed them. Radar had made the invisible visible, and in doing so, it had broken the back of the U-boat war.